Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Bible Life today. We're going through the parables that Jesus gave in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. <clears throat> today, we'll be looking at parable number 12, the parable of the lost sheep. It's number 12 in our list of 40. <clears throat> Last week, we skipped ahead and looked at <clears throat> parable number 40, uh, that parable that had to deal with the Pharisees and the defilement of the body. Because as we are going through the parables and considering them, uh, we are taking the ones in order that as we find them in the Gospel of Matthew, then we also make mention if they are included in Mark's Gospel and also in Luke's Gospel. Of the 40 parables, uh, I believe there are 21 of them that are in Matthew's Gospel. Uh, 10 or 11 are in the Gospel of Mark, and 27 of them are in Luke's Gospel. Uh, we're taking all of the ones that we find in Matthew's Gospel first. <clears throat> then we'll have a couple of them that are only found in Mark's Gospel. And then the last 17 of the 40 that we look at and consider will come only from the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> if you would like to get your Bible and follow along with me as I read, I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 18 and also from Luke chapter 15. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 18. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray... Does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountain to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices over that sheep uh, more than the ninety-nine that did not go astray. <clears throat> Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. This is Matthew's account of the parable of the lost sheep. And the background uh, in chapter 18 of the, uh, Matthew's Gospel was that it was this discourse that Jesus had been giving concerning the childlike faith that was necessary or is necessary for someone to have that results in salvation. And we find three times there are words in Matthew's account that have to deal with saving or salvation or perishing or in this case not perishing and that has caused uh, Dr. Uh, J. Vernon McGee in his commentary to make mention that his opinion is that Matthew's focus was that the shepherd was wanting to save that lost sheep and with the background having to do with children uh, he sees the possibility that Matthew's point of view would compare the lost sheep to a child or to a younger person. If you'll have read along with me, you may have noticed in your translation that when I read verse 11 that says, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost, that may not have been in your translation. Or if it's there, there may have been a footnote, if you have a study Bible, that says something along the lines that the in you uh, translation or text did not include that particular verse. <clears throat> when I read, I normally read from the New King James translation and the New King James translation as well as the Old King James is translated from a Greek text that's referred to as the Textus Receptus. Sometimes it's called the Received Text. <clears throat> This reference in a footnote that may have said in you, the N stands for the, <clears throat> excuse me, Nessel Allen Greek text, and it references the 27th edition of that. And the U stands for the United Bible Societies, and they use the fourth edition from that. The difference is <clears throat> the, uh, the people that have translations based on the NU Greek text 
say that it is an older text or an earlier text that came from uh, Alexandria <clears throat> and the Textus Receptus did not. When we were growing up or when I was growing up, everybody had a Bible that was a King James translation. And in the last few years, we've come along and come up with new English translations, the NIV or the ESV or the New American Standard or the New English Translation. And there's lots and lots of translations. And when we come across a discrepancy between my translation and one that you might be looking at, if it's of any consequence, I'll try to make sure to point that out. However, I would also comment that I don't believe there's any major doctrines or teachings that are uh, absolutely vital for salvation or for uh, New Testament church doctrine that, there, that we find a discrepancy in. So I think the differences are rather minor. But I do like and appreciate the received text or the textus receptus as far as a study goes. <clears throat> now we'll look at Luke's rendition of this parable of the lost sheep. <clears throat> it comes from Luke chapter 15, the first seven verses. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. <clears throat> in Luke's rendition of this uh, parable of the lost sheep, one of the words that we notice in there three or four times is the word find or found. And Dr. McGee likes to uh, consider that Luke it has emphasis on the shepherd finding the lost sheep. And then when he finds them, he puts the sheep on his shoulders and carries them back home. This particular parable relates to how important, I believe, every one of us is to the Lord Jesus Christ, especially every one of his believers. And I believe that it teaches that he's not going to let any of us go astray uh, to the point of being completely lost. We might relate it to what some people refer to as eternal security, that when you become a believer in Christ, uh, you will never lose your salvation. I have a, uh, a belief that the Bible teaches that, and some people disagree with that. But this particular parable indicates that <clears throat> with God, a little bit of collateral damage or loss is not acceptable. The idea is that if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one goes astray, he leaves the ninety and nine that didn't go astray and he goes after that one until he finds it and brings it back and then he rejoices over the fact that it has been found. And the comparison is that likewise in heaven there's more joy over a sinner who comes to accept Christ as Savior than over ninety-nine uh, people who are already uh, believers, and that's the comparison that's given. Matthew's account seemed to uh, take care of the little ones. His background was that giving of the discourse of the childlike faith and would maybe consider that lost sheep being a young person. Luke's account may have been directed at older people, because he talked about <clears throat> the tax collectors and the sinners uh, coming around Jesus and talking with him prior to when he gave this parable. The shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are the sheep. And in fact, in the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, 
in that great chapter over the salvation and the work of the suffering servant, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we find a reference to him and his uh, coming to bear our sins in chapter 53. The sixth verse of that, Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have each turned away uh, to our own direction. And God has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He's saying that people are like sheep and they tend to go away and stray. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in the 10th chapter of John, I am the good shepherd. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. One of the things that uh, we might consider from this particular parable is that if we belong to the Lord, he will not let us go astray forever. Uh, if we truly are his, if we go astray, we may find that uh, he chastises us. He'll do something to bring us back into the fold. Uh, it's often stated about a shepherd uh, and young sheep or lamb that might go astray, that if it continues to do that, the shepherd, when he gets the sheep, will break one of its legs so that it can't wander off. And then when they travel or go from pasture to pasture, the shepherd will carry that sheep or that lamb with a broken leg over his shoulders since he can't walk. And remember in Luke's account, when he found that lost sheep, he put it on his shoulders and rejoiced as he went back to where the rest of the fold were. And so the picture is that if the Lord has a wandering a lamb or sheep, he may have to break its legs to keep it from wandering off. But until the leg heals, he carries that sheep on his shoulder and his shoulder would be a place of strength. And what happens is by the time that the broken leg is healed by, on that lamb, he has come to love and enjoy the fellowship and the companionship of the shepherd so much that he never again has any intention or need or want to stray. And that is a picture of how the Lord deals with us as his sheep. Uh, he would desire for us to stay with him and follow him. And in fact, Jesus told his apostles that if you desire to be my disciple, you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow after me. But if we happen to be one of those sheep that wanders off and goes astray time and time again, the Lord may see need uh, to spiritually, so to speak, break our leg uh, so that we won't wander off. But during that time, he will be with us and he will keep us with him. He will carry us on his shoulders and just like that little lamb that develops such a relationship and a love for the uh, shepherd that when his leg is healed and he can walk on his own, at that time he has no desire to leave the shepherd and we would have no desire to leave the master. As we grow older, uh, we begin to uh, gain an understanding of just how much God loves us and all the things that he has done for us. The Apostle John, in one of his epistles, uh, writes and talks about three different groups of people. Uh, one is little children, and the, the next one is young men, and the third group is you fathers. And so he divides uh, people, or especially in that particular instance, the Jewish men that he was uh, writing to, he groups them as uh, little children, or young men, or fathers. And as you and I grow through our lives and uh, have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, my prayer is that uh, we will have a growing appreciation and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ so that we will be like those sheep that have no desire to wander away from the shepherd. Next week, we'll be looking at parable number 13, and it will be the parable of the unforgiving servant. Until then, I hope you have a great week. Let me close in prayer. Father, thank you for loving us. <clears throat> thank you for our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that each of us would be like 
the lambs or the sheep that have no desire to stray away from our master, from our shepherd. And if we do, Father, we pray that uh, you will find us, put us upon your shoulders and bring us home. Thank you so much for these who listen and take part in our Thursday Bible Life Today studies. I pray that you'd bless them and their families and their homes. We look forward to the coming of our Good Shepherd. We pray that it might be soon. We continue to pray for our country and the people, uh, that there would be mercy and grace come from upon high, that you would draw the hearts of the people back to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that there might not be chaos amongst our people and across our land, but that we might be draw have our hearts drawn close unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Until next Thursday, may the Lord bless you.